Welcome back. In our last video, we created this chest here <clears throat> that opens when, uh, when we interact with it. And now we want to create uh, an inventory that we can use to drag uh, over to our personal inventory. So I'm going to show you what we've got from the last video. So we interact with this, and it opens up. But what I really want to happen is that I want it to open up my inventory here, and I want it to open up another inventory here that I can drag items from to my personal bag inventory. So that's what we're going to work on. OK, <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is we need to open up our third person character with abilities. <clears throat> it has the ability, it has the, um, the BP node for creating It has the VP node for creating um, inventories. So we're going to create an event here. Create loot uh, custom event. And we're in our event graph of our third person character with ability VP. We're going to call create loot inventory. So we'll put that here. And then, um, like most things, they only run on the server side. So I want to make sure this is only running on authority. And we're going to call create HUD inventory. OK. And um, we'll keep a left reference to it here called loot inventory of type OWS inventory object reference. So when we create it, it's going to it's going to uh, output a reference and we'll store the reference in loot inventory in case we need it in the future. And we're just going to keep reusing the same one over and over. We're going to have a rule that you can only open one at a time. For now, we'll start with the same size inventory as our bag. In the future, we could have that be different things. And then what we want to do, we're on the server, we need to get back to the client. So we're going to create a custom event, owning client. So this is an RPC back to the client, show loot inventory. And we're going to call owning client, show loot inventory. So that'll get us back to the um, client side here. And to remind us, we can do this and pull off of remote just to remind ourselves we're on the client side. And we're going to get our controller and cast to third person player controller. Uh, we're going to do it from the remote side. And we want to set a variable on this player controller to let us know that, hey, we've got an inventory open. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're now on our third person player controller. We're going to create a variable called loot inventory is open to track that state. It's on the client side. And so now we will set loot inventory open. that we can track that state. Um, then we're also, eh, you know, so I'm going to do some things wrong here just so we can come back and fix them later. So just kind of the order. I did it when I first tested this, and I think, uh, I think, I think it's a good idea. Most of programming is debugging. So. We want to get good at that. So now I'm getting a reference from the player controller to our HUD. And I want to set show loot. OK, but I don't have it. OK, so it's time to go to our HUD. So now we're going to go open up our HUD. And we are going to need some variables here. So we're going to need loot inventory so we can store a reference so we don't have to get it every frame. 
so we'll store a reference to our OWS inventory, loot inventory. And then we need some kind of flag, just like we have show bag inventory. We need show loot inventory. Make it a bull. And then what we want to do here is we want to give ourselves some room to run a sequence of events. So we'll do a sequence. And the first thing we'll do is the bag inventory. And then the second branch we'll add down here will be, hey, let's show the loot inventory. So we're creating these flags <coughs> that show additional content. Yeah, I've got room. OK. So um, Okay, we're going to basically copy this same sort of setup here. And the only difference is we're going to swap these out for our loot inventory. So what we're doing is the same thing we did last time. We're saying, hey, um, if you try to show the inventory and we don't have a reference to the inventory, get the reference to the inventory. We're going to change this to loot. has to match the name that we created. Oops, the X. It has to match the name of what we created right here, loot. So that's putting it, this one creates it on the server, reps it down to the client, and keeps it in, in a uh, storage based on this unique name. So we're back to the HUD. And then, of course, once we get this reference, we will set it. So this is what happens on the first frame. And then the next time that it runs this, it'll hit this and go, oh, now it is valid, and it'll follow this. Um, OK, so we're going to want this whole thing. OK, and we're going to put this in the center, so middle center middle center, because we're still doing the same size, those widths are the same, this offset's the same, top left is the same, but the difference here is we want to show the loot inventory instead of the bag inventory, you know what? Uh, I like that better than this long one here. Sometimes wiring these things up is fun. And we can leave all these other settings the same, so that should be good. Okay. So now we've got this if show loot inventory, and we can go back to where we were, which was here. So we're back in our third person character with abilities, and we have our HUD. So let's show loot inventory. That's good. And then <clears throat> we need to. Um, basically do the same thing that we're doing. Let me go out of this trace. We're going to fix that in a minute, too. Let me go back to our input graph. And we've got this code up here. Where we toggle the inventory, right? We enable click events. We do this. But we don't want to interfere with this. It's actually going to create a problem. So we really just want to grab um, these three items. But you know what? They, they don't copy correctly. Um, so we're actually just going to to do it over here. So enable click events is in the player controller. So we're going to come back over here and grab our player controller. Enable click events. We don't have to worry about toggling it because at this point we're always setting it on. So enable or tick events. And. Um, this is to show our bag inventory, by the way. And now we want to set show bag inventory. Because when we open the loot, we're going to also open the inventory. So you've got somewhere to drag it to. It doesn't make sense to make the player have to do that. <clears throat> and then from our player controller, again, set UI mode. And we'll pull that out here. And we want that checked. Okay, 
So this is going to open up. This is going to open up our inventory, our bag inventory. That'll open up our loot inventory, and this sets something on the player controller so we know the loot inventory is open. We could technically, I guess, use this one as well and access it from it, but that's how I did it. Um, okay, so we've got that. That looks pretty good. Um, over here, rendering looks good. Third-person player controller. Okay, so one of the things that um, Rupgul pointed out, which was a good thing to note, is that I had just used this 500 uh, for doing our trace. And the problem was people who have their camera zoomed out a ways, um, they may never be able to get within 500, right? I had the camera kind of close when I was doing it. So what he suggested, which is a great idea, is that we get our camera, boom, and we get our uh, target arm length, and then we add 500 to that. And we're going to actually do the same thing. Remember, we had this in two places, so we're we were in the uh, server side one here. And now we're going to go over to our trace for interactable. And you're going to basically do the same thing here, and that should help improve that for the people who may have their camera zoomed out a little bit further. It just uh, makes more sense to take into account uh, the boom length, and then go 500 beyond that. Um, okay. So we've got that. So I think we're good to test this out. Um, there's going to be some problems, but we know that. That's on purpose. Um, so let's give it a try. We press C to interact. It opens up. It doesn't, because we never called. <laughs> we never actually called any of our new stuff. Um, okay, so we created this event on third-person character with abilities that has to be called from the server called create loot inventory, and we never called it. Uh, so we got to find out where we want to call that from, and I believe we want to call it from our third-person player controller um, when we interact. So right now, if we go to our invent graph. Uh, hold on. Input graph. Enters the interact button. Goes up to the server. The server side's where we want to be. We call this interact, but it's at this point that we want to do something additional. So after we tell it that we want to interact, which opens up that loot chest, now what we want to do is we want to get our controlled pawn and then we want to cast to third person character with abilities. We'll make that pure. And then we want to create loot inventory. So now that should get kicked off. So it's now from right after we interact with it and tell it to open up the chest, we now call that and this whole thing gets started. It's on authority we were on the server side. Yeah. This doesn't do anything, but it does help when you're trying to read it and figure out what's where. The other thing I thought of doing, maybe we'll come to this sometime, is um, color code these these comment backgrounds so we know which side is server code and which side is client code. I could see that being, being useful. Um, okay, let's give it a try now. Still missing something. Let's trace through what we've got. So, um, we cast a third person character with abilities. We created the loot inventory. So it should have made it over here. So we'll do a print string. 
create loot inventory. I had the same problem when uh, when I did this test earlier. So we're basically retracing my steps. Okay. And then um, this one here. You were probably uh, yelling at the screen going, you didn't set it to owning client, and we didn't. That's what the issue is here. So we're going to do running owning client. Um, and in this case, we are going to make that reliable. Try not to use reliable very often. That's the one that's going to leave us in a bad state. We could potentially design that a better way so it could fall out of the state. But in this case, yeah, I don't know. I would have to look into that, but for now I'm going to set it to reliable. Um, okay, let's give it a try again. It's going to get dark here soon. Oh, something flashed in the center there and then disappeared. Okay, interesting. So we got this here. I'm going to check our output log. Create loot inventory. Ah, it looks like it called it twice. Interesting. Let's try it again. Hmm. Okay, called it once, but it, it shows up and then disappears. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, let's take a look and see what happened there. So we can remove this print string because it did get here. And um, so one of the things that you'll notice is that the yellow press to interact didn't disappear. So this was actually the reason that we created this loot inventory is open, is that we want to go in this trace here, and we want to stop tracing when it's open. We're going to grab this loot inventory is open. We're going to use a not so we stay on the true side. It's just a convention. If you want to use false, that's perfectly fine. In C++, it looks a bit better, but it um, works a little different. Um, OK, so we got that. So now that will stop us from keep retracing. Let's see if that has any effect on the um, okay it still disappears and the Z doesn't go away that's making me think we got a problem with uh, with that with this um, loot inventory is open value latching back so let's take a look at what we did so we get to our owning client we set loot inventory is open on the third person player controller we set show loot inventory. We set, set enable click events. We set show bag inventory. And we set the UI mode to show the cursor. <clears throat> Not seeing any issues there. Um, we stop tracing, right? So that's good. So we'll stop doing this trace. And let's see, we'll come to our input here. Now oh, that was what started it. So let's go to our HUD. Maybe it's here. So we say, oh, <laughs> yeah, we hooked this up wrong. So it was supposed to be like this. Let's see, to match this one. I just drug it from the wrong one. So this correctly, only the first one frame there, and then the next frame it came through and started drawing nothing. Let's see if that makes a difference. I'm going to get too dark here in a second. Cool. OK, the Z to interact did not go away. So we got to get rid of that. But our other thing looks pretty cool. So let's, um, let's get that Z to interact to go away. So what we're going to have to do is that um, we're going to have to come back to our third person character abilities where we're doing this loot inventory is open 
we're going to have to grab our interactive get interactable widget and we're going to have to call remove from parent And that should get rid of our press Z to interact. Okay, cool. So we got that. So we don't have any items in it yet, but basically what would happen is that items would be over here, right? And then you'd have your inventory here, and you'd be able to drag your items from here to here, take what you want. And then um, we'd have to press some key that toggle it back off. Probably closing the inventory is what I'm thinking. So I think we want to change it so the inventory hides that as well. There's another problem too. <clears throat> and that problem is that we were assuming that the inventory um, was already started closed. That the inventory could actually already be open. So there's an, one more thing we have to do to fix that. And if we come into our player controller, we need to come back to our toggle inventory. You see how this is doing it? And the problem is that now that there's two ways to open this, that if you, when you try to hide it again, I press the I and it actually just brought it up a second time because we're relying on this flip-flop. This actually is not a great idea. What you want to do instead, which is much better, is go off of a value that you already have. So what we're going to do to flip out this here is we're going to say get HUD because we already have a bool that's already uh, handling this. Cast to our HUD. We'll make it pure. We know that's the only HUD. And now where we've got this flip-flop, we can get rid of it. And instead, we can just grab show bag inventory, what we're already toggling. And to get it to toggle, we can knot it, which will basically invert it. If it's, if it's true, it goes false. If it's false, it goes true. And so now by doing this, we won't have the issue of two different things changing it. Because that flip-flop actually was another bool here that we couldn't see. And so when we came over here and we were showing our bag inventory, we were actually breaking that flip-flop because now there were two bulls floating around. And so uh, this will fix that issue. But I think there's something additional we want to do here. So we want to say, hey, when you close the inventory, um, so what we'll do is we'll say um, loot inventory is open. When you close the inventory, if the loot is open, Let's close that too. So what we'll do is we will first toggle this bool. That'll help us handle the internals. So this will get us to start tracing again, right? Because once we do that, we can start tracing. And then we'll come over to our We'll come over to our HUD, and we'll do set show loot inventory, and we're basically now going to toggle that back as well, so it would hide it. So let's give this a try. Um, I think it's going to be too dark, so I'm going to come here, remove that value. Yeah, it's light enough. Okay, so um, I hit C to interact. It correctly hides it. Good, good. Now I press I to make it go away, and it goes away, and the Z comes back. Very good. That's what we wanted. But now there's another problem. What if our inventory was already open when we pressed Z to interact? And it's not a problem. It kept it open because of that change that we did. And now we press I to hide them, and they both go back away. All right? So there we go. We've got our, we've got our state uh, working correctly there. 
in all those different scenarios. So uh, in the next video, we're going to be putting items in here. We're going to work on creating a uh, loot drops data table. And we'll do some, you know, randomization of loot drops. And then we'll start populating our items here so that we can drag them over to our inventory when we open up this loot chest. And eventually this loot chest is going to drop and we kill those mobs running around over there. Okay. Till next time. See ya.